You're listening to KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas. The voice of the people voted best radio station for music two years in a row by the Dallas Observer. Did you know that KNON podcasts all of its local talk shows? KNON has local talk each show covering your community in its own unique way. So if you missed one of our great morning talk shows, you can go back and listen to it online. We keep the shows for two months so you can hear everything you have been missing out on. Visit KNON.org for more information about the KNON Morning Talk Shows podcast. Also available on iTunes. Speed. I'm Gene Lance. The number is 972-647-1893. Hot stuff happening. Even though it's going to get cold on Monday, there's going to be hot stuff. We're going to be uh, rallying at Senator Cornyn's office at uh, 4 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Senator Cornyn's office is at 5001 Spring Valley. And the point of the whole thing is no cuts. No cuts for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and stop all this nonsense about this phony fiscal cliff that they keep talking about, which they made up, which is a completely, completely, completely synthetic uh, crisis uh, that came from uh, the Republican side of the Congress. And now they're, they're saying that uh, there's a big disaster and we have to cut more poor people because that's how the economy gets better. If you give money to rich people, it'll make poor people happy. They've been saying that for 30 years. I got Judy Bryant here with me, uh, Bonnie Mathias and Judy Bryant of the Texas Alliance for Retired Americans, or rather of the National Alliance for Retired Americans. She's the Texas organizer. Good morning, Judy. Good morning, Jean. Are you going out there on Monday? Yes. As a matter of fact, the Texas Alliance for Retired Americans is sponsoring this rally, and we are joining labor brothers and sisters all over the country who will be rallying on Monday, December 10th from 4 to 6 p.m. called Candlelight Campaign Against Cuts. Uh huh. So we'd like everybody to come out and join us. Do you have to be labor? Do you have to be union members? No, you can be anybody because this affects everybody, and it is very, very important that we let Senator Cornyn know how we the people really feel. Yeah, and Deborah Beltran of the uh, Move, Move on. on is working on it, too, I know, because she sent us emails about it. Yes, they've been partnering with us very, very, very well. So we, we appreciate that, and we appreciate all the support we can get. Well, what's at stake, Excellent. Judy? What's, what can happen if we don't do anything? What can happen is just what you were referring to earlier, is that people can have Social Security benefits cut, Medicare things realigned as far as what people would have to pay. And they want to raise the retirement age for, for Medicare. Oh, yes, exactly, and also Medicaid mm -hmm. uh, could be cut. That's why in the Alliance for Retired Americans and in Texas Alliance for Retired Americans, we rallied all summer and into the fall for let's not be the last generation to retire mm -hmm. because our children, grandchildren, and other generations, we want them to be able to work as we have and then earn their retirement and retire and not work until they drop. Yeah, well, I've been watching the news very carefully ever since 2008, and it's become very clear uh, as the news, news is broadcast that uh, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid caused the fiscal crisis and caused <laughs> the recession. Is that true? No. 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 <laughs> Bonnie can sit still. No. <laughs> no, it's not. It was the bankers that caused this crisis. And now it's the bankers that are saying that everybody else has to pay. Yeah. It's right. the, the wealthiest part, the 2% of the richest people are saying that uh, the, rich, the poor people have to pay for this mess that we made uh, in 2007 and, you know, and leading up to it with all of the shenanigans that they pulled in the banking and all that. Damn you poor people. Yeah. <laughs> well, they love us, and they're trying our to old, our old people, old people, poor people, people. same all thing. you people, you all you people caused that. Same thing. Oh for, yeah, for a large extent, most most poor, most uh, older people don't have much money and don't have no. much of an income, and they're the ones that they're trying to hit. I got a letter from uh, Congressman Sessions the other day saying, uh, you know, we want to help Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid and save these things. You know, and he don't say. He liar, to, liar, he, he pants wants, on fire. He does want to save them by cutting them. <laughs> you know, if, if, they didn't, if they only paid 50% of what they're paying now, then they last longer. Well, man, you know, cat food's getting where it's just about as expensive as tuna, so I don't know what's going to happen. 
The, I, I, you know, this is this whole thing has just become so insane. What else y'all doing, Judy Bryant? So uh, the main thing that the main thing is Monday that we want to want folks to come out and join us Monday evening. It's going to get cold. Also, you want you want to come even though uh, it's cold? Ab- absolutely, yeah, very definitely. Just bundle up. Uh, we won't stay out there and freeze everybody to death. We're going to go into Senator Cornyn's office and uh, take him the message that uh, we don't want cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. We're also going to take him. Um, the Social Security Works for Texas report, which tells the true stories of how Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid assist residents all across the state of Texas. Hundreds of thousands of people are directly affected by these programs. We have one of our Terra members who's highlighted in there, as a matter of fact, who lost her job just before she was 65, mm-hmm. had great health problems with diabetes and kidney disease and several other things, high blood pressure. and. She had no way to pay for the COBRA for her insurance. Luckily, she was close to her 65th birthday and qualified for Medicare and her late husband's Social Security, and that's how she's living today. And that's what that's what saved her life. Ex- exactly. We've had, uh, we've had any number of retirees stand up at our meetings and say that these programs saved my life. That's the only thing I'm living on. Exactly, and we, we have another uh, man I, I remember who lives over in the Grapevine area who has to have regular treatments. And he told his story earlier in the summer when we had a, a Social Security Medicare rally about how things are, are life-saving. And those are the things that we're concerned about for the people who are living right now. But we also want those programs to be around for other generations because we pay for those programs. Right. We pay into Social Security. We pay into Medicaid. Our Medicare, our employers pay into that. It's not a gift. It no. is not something that we got freely given to us we earned it yeah we paid for it all the time that we were working that's Uh, right and and there's going to be six of these across the state that just like uh, not just exactly like but i mean with the same exact demands as the one that judy's working on which will be at 5001 spring valley at four to six on monday 5001 spring valley then there's six of those but also move on's got one of their own in Fort Worth. It's going to be at 11.15 a.m. They're going to go rally at the offices of Congresswoman Kay Granger. And that's uh, on University Drive and River Run Road. Or if you've got a GPS and you want the exact address, it's 1701 River Run Road in Fort Worth and the zip code 76107. 1701 River Road at 11.15 on Monday. But then Judy's action and the one that the retirees are going to over here in Dallas is at, what's the address again? 5001 Spring Valley, it's just west of the tollway. We are going to meet in the vacant uh, parking lot right across the street from Senator Cornyn's office. Mm-hmm. His office is in a high rise and we will be going over there and delivering some things to his office. But our rally's going to be directly in front of his office. So meet us across the street at four o'clock, bundle up, it's very, very important. We know we've had balmy weather and things are changing, but Would things you? could change drastically for the rest of a lot of people's lives if we don't come out and make our voices heard, and that's what we really need everyone to do. This is very, very, very serious. There's a lot at stake, a tremendous amount at stake. The debt ceiling needs to be raised again, and we don't want to go through that being held hostage again on the debt ceiling. Uh, food stamps have not been approved. That's what right. if food stamps run out on the 1st of January? And uh, uh, all the millions of people that depend on those food stamps. Unemployment benefits. Unemployment extensions. Yes. Uh, unemployment extensions will run out on the 1st of January if something's not done. We've got to turn some of these hard-hearted, rich people into good-natured philanthropists or something. We've got to, or we've got to overcome them or something. We've got to organize the ordinary people or we're going uh, to face very, very serious problems come the 1st of January. Now, one of those problems is not exactly the fiscal cliff. In fact, I, I was <laughs> listening to uh, one of the former Secretary of Labor speaking the other day, uh, uh, Reich, and uh, he, he, was saying, he was saying that it's, it wouldn't be that bad if they did uh, go, quote, go over the fiscal cliff. In other words, if they did not reach an agreement by the 1st of January, because he said they could fix it any time after that if they wanted to. So it's not, it's, we're not facing the brinksmanship 
He, uh, other other people are calling it a fiscal slope, you know, another a bad bump to hit, but not uh, but not something that's going to kill us all. So they're using this as a way to try to cut poor people. They're, try, they're using it as a way mm -hmm. to cut what they really want to cut, which is more than anything else: Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Judy, go ahead. One of the other things that we're also doing that we've been doing all fall and we will be doing at this rally for people who haven't done it is signing a petition to our state legislators and our governors and our governor in our state about the fact that uh, he has said that we will not take Medicaid funding that was made available by the Affordable Care Act, by Obamacare, mm -hmm. and we are getting lots of signatures on those petitions and right. we'll be doing this at the rally in, in addition to other things because on February the 12th we will be taking those petitions to Austin cool. for the senior um, lobby day in Austin for the senior day and we'd like folks out there to put that date on their calendar February the 12th 2013 if you need more information about that, you can always go to our Texas Alliance of Retired Americans website, which is TexasRetiredAmericans.org. But this petition is asking the governor and the legislator who, legislature who will eventually make the decision to accept this money so that we don't deny poor people the funds that they need to stay healthy and also so that we don't deny seniors the money that they need for vital nursing home care in their elderly years. Mm -hmm. and Judy, you have a Facebook page too? Yes, we do. Our Facebook page is Texas Alliance for Retired Americans and we would invite anyone to please go and like us and see what we do. Um, we post regularly on that and on our website so you mm -hmm. can always keep up to date with what's going on. 972-647-1893 is the number if you have an opinion if you have a question you want to ask judy bryant she's only going to be around here a few minutes because she's off to another uh another business it never stops does it judy <laughs> no it doesn't bonnie it's always working right yes, right right yes. well, working, working working organizing retirees is hard work but it is absolutely critical yes you know the retirees are the, wor are the worst voters in america really yes they are uh -huh. because they they vote more than anybody else and they vote republican uh How's by 56 percent really it's a true yeah, fact amazing isn't it yes Man. it is amazing but uh, that's hey y'all better wake up now uh -huh. <laughs> But Goodness Judy, Judy Bryant is working on that, getting the retirees organized and doing a heck of a job. You've also got another action on Wednesday, Judy. Uh, you want to talk about that one? Yes, and then, then I'll also uh, let you tell a little bit more about it on uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock 7 o'clock at the UAW 848 Hall in Grand Prairie. Mm -hmm. We will be joining um, for a rally, the exact title of which is... <laughs> <laughs> I had to show it to her. Touch uh, teach in. Teach in on the conspiracy to make America a low wage country. Mm -hmm. uh, this is UAW 848, 2218 East Main in Grand Prairie. Uh, you can arm yourself with information on Walmart organizing, Verizon contract fights, and overcoming the congressional takeaway artists well which generally, is exactly what we've been talking generally about. the problem is that uh, the very very rich people are cutting the poor very very poor people while taking tax handouts for themselves and that's that's it in a nutshell and the answer I bet I bet Bonnie would like to give the answer what's the answer Bonnie to all this problem well at making it a bit more uh, fair uh -huh. across the board uh, now they're talking about uh, uh, the uh, what is it alternative minimum tax mm -hmm. could actually hit people making seventy thousand uh dollars -huh. yeah that's another thing that they that they say needs fixing uh, th you think mm -hmm. and then you know what about all these people all of these wealthy seniors who are drawing social security mm -hmm. i mean seriously why are we and and i'm talking about folks who really don't need the money at mm -hmm. all why are we not capping that changing that so that the people that work the hardest and have the least will have something to live on mm -hmm. you know i've uh, so if everybody paid their fair share we'd be all right yeah that's that's the bottom line and another thing that a lot of people have talked about is is 
uh, eliminating the cap, scrap the cap of Social Security. I don't guess I realized until just fairly recently that you only pay Social Security taxes on the first about $106,000 mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. your of your wages, mm-hmm. and that just blew my mind. Because so people we, that make over $106,000 quit paying Social Security. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and I'm think and and that that's just seems crazy to me because that's not everybody paying their fair share. That's right. Exactly, no. fair share in Social Security taxes, anything else, if we all share and pay our fair share, then we'll all do fine. Rich people exempt from, from the from the payroll tax. Well, it, odd, uh, odd as it may seem. That the is answer, amazing. The answer to all of this is organizing. Yes. That's why it's so important to work with the Walmart people and work with the people that are organizing. Now, they're not all unions, <laughs> but, nearly, but most of them are that are, are organizing working people and giving them a chance to stand up for themselves and giving them a chance to, uh, to come out of these uh, terrible crises and have a voice because one man talking is not going to be listened to. That's right. But if you, the, if you really want to make a difference, you have to join your voice with others. And so that's why we're working together with the Walmart organizing, which I think, I think, I think the Walmart organizing drive is the very center of organizing in America today. I know there's a lot of other organizing drives going Mm -hmm. on, but the Walmart organizing drive, organizing those low-wage workers, is the most important organizing drive going on in America today. So we are delighted that uh, Dallas is one of the places where, uh, and Dallas and Fort Worth are places where uh, the Walmart organizing drive is going pretty well. Sure is. And uh, national... The national people are looking at uh, Dallas and Fort Worth and saying uh, that they're doing something right, and they're they're listening to the Walmart workers in this area because they are doing pretty well. Organizing is the answer, and I would go so a little further than that and say organizing is the only answer. Yeah. Working people do not have a voice by themselves. Exactly. Only when we get together, and that's especially true of retirees who have just sat around and let all this stuff happen to them up up until recently that's what's been very very frustrating and because i think people think that they can just retire and go home and sit on the couch and do things with their grandkids and all those other kinds of things and i love to do all those things too but it's very very important that we get out and let our voices be heard because with all the retirees that we have all across the board whether they're in unions, whether they're not in unions, we're inviting you to become members of the Texas Alliance for Retired Americans and unite with us to engage in this fight because it's, as our president, Gene, said, if you're 10 years old and you see your parents working and hopefully someday retiring, you want to retire too so everybody can be a part of Texas Alliance for Retired Americans. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be retired. That's Gee, why we, uh, tell them again where you want um, to see them on Monday. We would like to see you on Monday at the Candlelight Campaign, Candlelight Vigil Against Cuts. That's at, across from Senator John Cornyn's office in Dallas at 5001 Spring Valley. It is just west of the tollway. We will meet in a large vacant parking lot right across the street from Senator Cornyn's <coughs> office. There are, there's a sign that points to his office on both sides of the street. So we would certainly like to see you there, and then we would like to see you again on Wednesday at UAW 848 in Grand Prairie. That'll be at 7 o'clock, and on Monday it's at 4 o'clock at 5001 Spring Valley up in North Dallas. We'll be right back. I got to work this morning. Something seemed kind of strange. My- Tune in every Saturday morning for KNON Speak Up Saturdays. Speak Up Saturday starts at 7 a.m. with an expanded church information and forum hosted by Reverend Marion Barnett, a news and politics show for you. Then at 9 a.m., it's the Workers' Bee hosted by Gene Lance, sponsored by the CWA, a show for workers' rights. At 10 a.m., the Dallas Observer presents Jim Shoots. Get off my lawn with the other side of the news. Wrapping up Speak Up Saturdays at 11 a.m. is Lambda Weekly with David Tappet, the longest-running LGBTQ talk show in the country. Be sure to tune in every Saturday morning to Speak Up Saturdays right here on KNON 89.3 FM, the voice of the people. 
This Sunday at Poor David's Pub, it's the Blues Diva Showcase. Gilda here from the Wednesday Morning Blues Crew with your personal invitation to a big K&ON event this Sunday, December 9th at Poor David's Pub. Don't miss my band, the Gilda Medina Band, and don't miss all of the amazing blues women this Sunday with Miss Marcy and her Texas Sugar Daddies, Blue Lisa, and the Big D Playboys, Andrea Dawson, Brittany Yates, Javelin, Lady Lotion, and Sugar Mama. Short Stack from the Blue Mondays will be your hostess this Sunday. We have free dinner from the legendary Henderson chicken. This Sunday, it's a party for your ears and a party for your belly. This Sunday is an early show with doors at 5 p.m. and music at 5.30, ending at 9 p.m. Tickets are at knon.org, Henderson's Chicken Outlets in Dallas, Fair Park, and Lancaster, Bill's Records, and for every young record in Grand Prairie. Poor David's Pub is located at 1313 South Lamar in Dallas. The Big Blues Divas Showcase this Sunday, 5 p.m. at Poor David's Pub. This is a KNON benefit event. Blue Monday. 972-647-1893 is the number. KNON just loves it when you call because it's the voice of the people. Judy Bryant's got to go, so tell us one more time, Judy, what, what it is that you want people to do. We want to see you this Monday, December the 10th, from 4 to 6 p.m. at the rally Candlelight Campaign Against Cuts. That's across from Senator John Cornyn's office. 5001 Spring Valley. It's just west of the tollway. Bundle up and bring yourself. We'll have can- we'll have battery operated candles and we'll have signs for you and we would love to see you there. We also want to see you on Wednesday, December the 12th, 7 p.m. at UAW Hall 848 on East Main in Grand Prairie. That is for a teach-in on the conspiracy to make America, a low-wage country. And I really thank Gene for having me on his program this morning. Well, I really thank Judy Bryant for showing up because somebody's got to stand up for retirees. Of course, the retirees going to have to stand up for themselves, and that's why they need an organizer like Judy Bryant. That's right. And that's why we need you to come out. So we'll see you on Monday. Just bundle up and come on out. All right. Thank you. I, I should tell everybody that Judy is a school teacher, and she expects you to get this right. That's right. And you will That's be right. You will be graded on your attendance. <laughs> That's it. On Monday. <laughs> you know, Gene, I I got a, a post from a friend uh, on Facebook the other day, and it's so appropriate. Uh, entitlement is exa- is actually an accounting term that refers to fixed payments that must be honored. Mm-hmm. Republicans have taken this accounting term and used it in a vernacular form, which suggests that an entitlement is something you feel you are entitled to. Uh-huh. It is a linguistic linguistics trick, which has worked well in influencing the minds of people, mostly conservatives, that our society is full of takers who are getting something for nothing. Yeah. Uh, congressional candidate Mitt Romney really messed up when he when he let he let people know that that's what he thought. You know, uh-huh. He said forty seven percent of Takers. of the people are just uh, laying around waiting for the government to do something for them, uh-huh. and uh, uh-huh. boy, that must have hurt him bad. Yeah, I think so. I mean, fixed payments that must be mm-hmm. honored. That is honest. That is actually what they what they think. Yeah, they think that uh, retirees are just bums. You know, and they, they've, they've as much as said so. In oh, fact, yeah. Mitt Romney did say so, Oops. that they're just laying around <laughs> uh, expecting a dole or something like that without Crazy. any accounting for the fact that they worked all their lives, was worked and sweated all their lives. And uh, and he didn't, so he, don't, he can't relate to exactly. that. Exactly. You know? And some people were injured on their jobs mm-hmm. and have now become disabled, sure. are no longer able to work. Uh, are those people are on the take. And a large percentage of Social Security recipients, brothers and sisters, are children. Yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. They are. Yes. And uh, 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 the Medicaid, a lot of Medicaid recipients are children, too, because uh, this is a country that has a reputation for trying to take care of its people hmm. and not leaving anybody behind. Not in Texas. But... Uh, <laughs> But Governor Perry is, has done is a, a really fine good job. example of yep. somebody who would really just like just as soon see us in the ditch. Yep. Uh, and we got to do something about that. Yes, you, we do. You have to acknowledge that this is true. That's that's the first step to wisdom. 
is to realize that somebody is out to get you. It's not paranoia. Yeah, this if, is. <laughs> if it's true. That's right. You're not paranoid if it's true. Yeah, and it is true. It is. That people, people want to get a dole from the government. They want to continue to get tax cuts from the government, big tax cuts. This is the position of House Speaker Boehner. That's right. And he'll say so if you ask him. He wants no tax, no, no uh, he wants to continue getting tax cuts for the very, very wealthy, and he wants to cut the poor people. I, th- I seriously think that the tanning bed or, or the chemicals in the tanning solution has affected his brain. <laughs> I <laughs> well, think it it's certainly a- affected his conscience. I don't think he has one of those yeah, I at was, all. I was wondering about that because I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking in terms of science fiction you know i don't know if you knew that but i'm a science fiction buff no, i did not know that and, about you and uh and i was thinking what would happen if we had a, a fair and just government you know and i thought well they'd probably have to arrest a lot of people because uh, a lot of the people that are running things now are sociopaths <laughs> <laughs> exactly and what do you do with how do you rehabilitate sociopaths i don't you think can't. i don't think there is a rehabilitation no. for them and uh, oh. what they do with them now is put them in Congress. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Some of them, you know, there's a few from the old days that are mm-hmm. in uh, the maximum security prisons in Florence, Colorado. A, uh, <laughs> a sociopath, as I understand it, is somebody who has no conscience. There you go. And, and doesn't care anything about anybody else. John Gotti. Just, just thinks Charles about Manson. himself. There you go. John mm-hmm. Gotti, Charles Manson. I well, mean, doesn't that describe some of our pretty much. person, doesn't it? John Cornyn would be a perfect example of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I am really, I'm disappointed I can't go on Monday because I've been thrown out. I do have to work, but mm-hmm. I have been thrown out of his office in D.C. a couple of times. Really? I've never been thrown out of his office here in Dallas. Well, we would love to have you on I, Monday. I, gosh, I wish I could go. Not that, I we're, really expecting, do. Not that we're expecting you to get thrown out. We ex- I know, you guys probably We expect won't. to deliver a message and <laughs> right. uh, hopefully uh, someone will hear us. We just have to keep trying. That's it. Uh, this is how change comes about. Yes. People at the bottom have to get together and start doing something, and that's how change comes about. In fact, it's pretty much the only way that change ever did come about. That's right. It's how we got Social Security to begin with. Uh, The great uprising of the 1930s when millions of people marched. You know, they didn't march in millions. They marched 10 or 15 here and 12 or 14 there. That's right. But but it added up to millions. That's right. And... uh, and they got Social Security, and they got fair wages, they got the weekends, they got the 40-hour work week, and Child a whole bunch of things. Child labor laws, all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we had the Works Progress Administration, which provided over WPA. 8 million jobs. And, I, think uh, we need a, I think we need a modern-day WPA. Yes, we I do truly need that. do. We do need that. Infrastructure is is failing all over the country. We need a WPA to put Americans back to work. And, and improve the infrastructure of this country. Let's see what KNON listeners think. It's nine. They can just call us at 972-647-1893. Do you think people are getting a fair deal now? Do you think they're going to get a fair deal in the future? And what do you think uh, they need to do to get from here to there? That's right. Uh, Tell I've been, us what I you advocate think. getting out and, uh, and demonstrating, picketing, uh, attending demonstrations and that sort Rally's of thing. Absolutely. You can see this going on in the Middle East. You can see it going on in Egypt right now. Oh my gosh, and look at Syria. And they're they make, just, they're making big changes. Yes, they are. And, and the people in, in, in Egypt, you know, they elected this, this leader and all of a sudden he's turning around. He wants to be the new dictator. Uh-huh, that's true. <laughs> and and they're, the, the, that's not what they voted for. And they're telling them in no uncertain terms, this is not what we voted for. Yeah. And, you know, over there, they, they get kind of radical over there. But you know what? I see it spreading worldwide. It didn't, it didn't start with millions of people. It started with 10 or 12, that's 14 right. here and, and 12 grew. there. And it grows. That's, that's, it. Uh, that's how our movement is built. You mentioned unemployment, which did go down, and we're very, we're very, very grateful, grateful for that. But the reason it went down is because so many people quit looking. Oh, I know that. That's right. Yeah. And uh, if you look at the statistic on the number of people who are uh, who have gotten so-called discouraged workers who are not looking for a job at all, and so they don't count as unemployed. You know, the, if you don't look for a job, they don't count you as unemployed, even if you're starving to death, even if you're in a hospital, you're not you're not unemployed. Uh, but if the uh, the other group is uh, people who are working part time 
uh, that don't want to be working part time. Which is huge. If you if you put those two groups together and look at how that number has grown in the millions and millions, you see what's really wrong in this in this particular crisis that we're in. Now I'm not I'm not disagreeing with uh, uh, House. Speaker John Boehner that there's a crisis, but he's just working on the wrong crisis. Yeah. The, the real crisis is all these people that are hungry and can't feed their kids and can't take care of them. Uh, schools getting cut, uh, retirees getting cut, and uh, that is a real terrible crisis that's going on. It's not the crisis that the Republicans created back in 2011 when they said that we had to have all of this uh all of these cuts that are now what they call the which the they now call cliff. the fiscal cliff but they created this it's a completely synthetic crisis Absolutely. and it's the wrong crisis the real crisis is the one that uh, where people are hurting 972-647-1893 you don't have to agree with bonnie and me you can no. call and disagree with us that's just fine we love it 972-647-1893 there's a whole bunch of other things happening Besides the demonstrations on Monday, uh, which I, I, I'll go back over that, there's at least three of them uh, that, that we're working on, Monday and Wednesday, coming up. And then there's six across the state, and then, I don't know, a hundred or more across the country. Excellent. Uh, the unemployment crisis, the, the American pilots who are organized, they're pretty well organized, I must admit. They did pass the... They, they got a good contract. Overwhelmingly they, passed it. They passed it by 74%. Yep. And one of the aspects of it is that they're going to get a 13.5% equity stake in the company. So the pilots are going to own part of the country, part of the company. However, if you look at this, uh, <laughs> if you look at the the outsourcing aspect of it, the company is going to be able to outsource their jobs. So, yeah. uh, so zero. So they took some licks <laughs> on this. And thirteen and a half percent times zero is, <laughs> I mean, oh, it's a company really, worth what? nothing. I mean, wait, you got thirteen and a half percent of what? A well, worthless company. I think uh, I think American Airlines is going to be worth a lot of money, and uh, I hope so. People are thinking about investing in it. I want to think about that I because hope so. uh, they're 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 resolving their problems, and they're still making money hand over fist. And so is uh, so is so are all the corporations. When you get right down to it, when they stop making hand money hand over fist, they quit operating. December the fourth of 1943, we should have celebrated this. December the fourth of 1943 was the end of the Works Progress Administration in concluding the four-year run of one of American government's most ambitious public works programs. It helped create jobs for roughly 8.5 million people during the Great Depression and left a legacy of highways and public buildings and parks, uh, including Revershawn Park and including yeah. Lee Park, Lee Park. Uh, White Rock, yeah. Uh, the Dealey Plaza. If you when you go by Dealey Plaza, just remember that that was built by WPA by the by government <coughs> employees. Uh, they say now that only business can create jobs, but the oh. Works Progress Administration created jobs to the tune of eight and a half million of them. And that wasn't the only program either. There was uh, the Civilian Conservation That's right. Corps, That's right. which also worked on White Rock Lake and made it uh, as beautiful as it is today. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also provided a whole bunch of jobs. My own, my own stepfather worked for the Civilian Conservation Corps. Wow. A lot of what they did was clearing out brush and that sort of thing and planting trees. And, uh, and you know, we do have... Those good things. That It's a great thing. And we actually have a workforce similar to the CCC in AmeriCorps. Mm -hmm. uh, AmeriCorps folks have come into the Great Trinity River Forest and uh, uh, cleaned out and made trails uh, through, I think there's 14 miles of trails uh, through the forest that were created by AmeriCorps. If we were working on the right crisis, we'd be, we'd be, Man, we'd be we bolstering would, those programs. We'd be kicking it. And people put, putting people to work. That's it. Instead, they're going around saying, well, now what you have to do if you want poor people to be happy is give more money to rich people. That's right. That's what we've been hearing ever since Reagan invented oh. the idea. Give that, more money to rich people, and that'll make the poor people happy. 972-647-1893 no. <laughs> if you want to get your opinion in on this. That, that brings me to, that, that makes me think about a story from John Cornyn's Washington, D.C. office, as a matter of fact. Uh, quite a few years ago, 
uh, myself and and other members of of the of an organization were uh, uh, in DC and we had an appointment with uh, Cornyn's office and of course we had a junior staffer in the hallway uh, which is normal and uh, <laughs> this one of the young men that was with us so from El Paso uh, he's the, the the young man said well you know we understand that that you know that once that once it starts rolling down and John looked up and said man we know what that is it's just the rich people peeing on our heads man That's we true. know what that trickle down is we don't need any more of that <laughs> He felt so, we all just died laughing, yeah. and of course, uh, and and like twenty minutes later, he felt so bad. He went back and hunted down that staffer and apologized. Is that a fact? Yeah, I wanted to choke him, but that's okay. <laughs> when they wet on our heads, they call it rain. That's right. And we're we're supposed that's to think right. we're supposed to go along with it. Yeah. The whole bunch of things are going on in the Communication Workers of America. I, I get the CWA news, and we want to pass that on to you. Some of this is pretty good, too. American Airlines passenger service agents, starting yesterday, they're exercising their democratic right to vote on union representation a whole year after the Communication Workers of America petitioned the National Mediation Board for the election on behalf of the agents. Over the past year, American Airlines schemed to delay the vote, mm -hmm. intimidate the workers, and disregard the law, all to block the agents' democratic right to vote. They're, they're, I call them the agents because they're the gate agents. Yes, gate agents, gate agents uh, reservation Airlines. agents, folks like that. The National Mediation Board mailed out voting instructions to nearly 9,700 agents on December the 4th, and the agents have begun voting by telephone or internet. Excellent. The election runs through January 15th, and I hope they'll tell us uh, how that comes out. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. Uh, we want to announce it on KNON. Congratulations to you if you're a, a gate agent at American Airlines because you are finally going to get your democratic right to vote on whether or not you want to have a union. Mm -hmm. Now here's some horrible news coming right after that one. The Michigan legislature oh. has rammed through a right to work law. So they want to be more like Texas. They're not poor enough in Michigan they're not, they're not low on the poverty scale. Their children are not cramming themselves into, into giant, big classrooms. Uh, they're not hurting enough in Michigan, so they want to be a right-to-work law like Texas. I don't, now, oh, man. I just heard a story about Detroit uh -huh. and how Detroit has so little money, they, they, their public uh, or their, their private public employees sector has taken cuts, layoffs, mm -hmm. Uh, they have more. They have vacant land in in the city of Detroit that equals the size of Philadelphia. They will be taking more cuts too, Sister Bonnie. Jeez. I can tell you for sure because cuts are what you get after you become right to work. That's right. Uh, that's why Texas has the has the the record uh, for low wage workers and for uh, people that are uh, uh, at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. Uh, impoverished people, hungry children, and all that because Texas invented right to work. And the name, by the way, was created right here at the Dallas Morning News. Your friendly Dallas Morning News newspaper is proud of this. They ran, a, they ran an article about it last year celebrating the fact that their editor had come up with this great idea to call it something nice. They so it didn't it, sound so bad. So they call it right to work when really it's the right to starve. Yeah, union it, busting. Uh -huh. It's the right to bust your unions. Yep. Walmart, the nation's largest private employer, while I'm giving bad news, <laughs> the, the nation's largest private employer plans to deny health insurance to newly hired employees who work fewer than 30 hours a week, according to the company's policy obtained by the Huffington Post. They, they used to deny health health care to a lot more employees and then they they made a big announcement said oh we're going to give health care to more of our employees and now they're going backwards on that they're going yep. to give health care to Less. fewer of their employees because uh 30 hours a week if you work for walmart you're lucky to get 30 hours a week because yep. they they you're a part-time worker and you, right. they can do almost anything they want to to you we're ready to take a break just real soon now uh the New York Times reports Texas gives out $19 billion a year in tax breaks to companies. Corporate subsidies don't seem to do much for wage rates, though. No, it hasn't seemed to improve any at all. We'll be right back.
Join the KNON Community Advisory Board. It is a great opportunity to offer your voice to the voice of the people. KNON's Community Advisory Board provides advice to KNON's Board of Directors about KNON programming decisions, community service, and policies. The role of the Community Advisory Board is solely advisory. This board meets four times a year on the second Tuesday of January, April, July, and October. The next meeting is January 8, 2013 at KNON. Meetings are open to the public. If you are interested, please go to knon.org and scroll down through our events or call 214-237-3003 for more information. Deadline for applications is Monday, December 17th. Recycle Revolution is a local recycling collection service and community drop-off center. They collect and accept all traditional recyclables including paper, plastic, aluminum, cardboard, and glass as well as materials like TVs, computers, lamps, light bulbs, batteries, ballasts, and styrofoam. They offer collection services to apartments, condos, and businesses. They also offer a community drop-off located at 1703 Chestnut Street in Dallas. For more information, 214-566-3025 or RecycleRevolutionDallas.com. Don't be a Scrooge. Give the blues to the music lover on your list. KNON has the perfect CD or LP for you. Texas Blues Radio, Volume 5. Texas Blues Radio, Volume 5, features acoustic blues, instrumental blues, party songs, somebody done somebody wrong songs. Baby Got a Good Thing songs, six-pack and devil-back songs. Gumbo, jive, T-bone, and hip-shaking songs from a fine selection of great Texas blues artists. So do right by the blues and give some Texas blues this year. Texas Blues Radio, Volume 5 CD is available at KNON. Win.org, Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie, Record Town in Fort Worth, and in Dallas at Bill's Records and Rewind Music. Download a copy at cdbaby.com. The LP is only available at Forever Young Records. All proceeds are a gift to KNON. We're back on the workers' beat. 972-647-1893 is the number. We were just talking about some of the things that Communication Workers of America is up to, and I want to point out that the president of the union, Larry Cohen, appeared on News Talk, a Washington, D.C. public affairs television show on Tuesday, to discuss how the Senate filibuster is undermining democracy. He hmm. said, and I quote, the American people need to demand that the majority have rules that mean that key issues of the day are discussed and not buried. He said, the communication workers and progressive allies like the Sierra Club, the United Auto Workers, Common Cause, the NAACP, and more are working for real reform of the Senate rules. Right now, it takes 60 votes for the Senate to do anything, mm -hmm. turning the country's great deliberative body into a dysfunctional mess. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. And something else on the communication workers. Brother Claude Cummings of the Communication Workers of America reports that CWA will begin early bargaining with AT&T Southwest for a new contract covering 22,000 workers. The current contract runs until April the 6th, 2013. I'm sitting next to one of those 22,000 workers. Uh, yep. Bonnie, yep. what's it look like? Y'all are you're, Why are they opening negotiations now? They didn't have to open them. I think uh, I, Claude is Claude is really a smart man, and we had our bargaining caucus last week in in um, Austin, uh, and then the pre bargaining started shortly after that, I believe. Uh, I think they were all the bargaining team was meeting and really getting their game plan on, and then the announcement was made about mm -hmm. the pre bargaining. I think it's a great idea because this is not going to be easy. Uh, AT and T is, uh, I mean, their landline uh, is going down. But everybody needs to understand: just because you don't have a landline at your house anymore, there still has to be wire line that connects all these cell phone towers uh -huh. and all the and your UVerse. There still has to be wire line. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and it's real hard to to get that. The company knows that, but they really want to shift that work to they lower want paid work. They want to outsource it. Well, they want to shift it to the lower paid workers. Uh huh. So well, they any way that they can save money that's by it. by not paying the workers. There you go. That's what they're after. And Bonnie, uh, we talked last time about them outsourcing Yellow Pages. Is that still going on? Yellow Pages was actually sold 
to a standalone company in May of, of 2012. Mm-hmm. Uh, that company announced on uh, November the 27th that across the country, uh, customer service and publishing is being outsourced. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found out yesterday that my job, uh, which is in the collections department uh, and salvage, uh, is actually, we're going to be off the payroll the end of January. Uh-huh. In other words, a bunch of people are going to get laid off. Yeah. There'll be, there's a, about 100 people here. Uh, we have sent a petition, uh, a request for, to Claude to petition the, uh, for trade assistance adjustment uh, because our jobs are being outsourced. Uh, there's another law that applies if there's over 100 people being outsourced uh, at a location. Mm-hmm. I believe it's called the Warren Law. The Warren have, Act, yeah. Warren Act, and I have not researched that, and honestly, I don't know if we have 100 people. I think it's so. over 50. Uh, oh, really? When, when they lay off a certain number of people, when, when big layoffs occur, they have to give them a certain amount of warning. And then uh, that also triggers your ability to put in for Trade Adjustment Act money. And uh, the union can, can start that. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted to say that I had a little bit of a role in that in the aerospace industry. Good. Back in 1993, uh, they were laying off a bunch of people from my plant, which was LTV at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it was Vaught at that time. And uh, uh, I, I, my wife and I wrote up a big proposal about how we should uh, implement the Warren Act. And we had a union uh, election. And uh, the new president on the first day asked me, what are we going to do about all these layoffs? And I said, well, it's laying on your desk. The proposal is <laughs> laying on your desk. And he picked it up and he said, what do I have to do? And I said, you have to, all you have to do is call the Texas workforce and say that you're, you're initiating the Warren Act. And so he did it while I was standing there. Wow, that is so cool. And uh, we, we were able to uh, save uh, thousands of people oh from the, the very big tragedy that yeah. goes on in the aerospace industry all the time of people getting laid off. Uh, yeah. Right and left, and then they, and you know, and they just left with nothing. Nothing. Uh, yeah. But the Texas, the Trade Adjustment Act will give you a little bit more than nothing. But you're still laid off. Right. It's, right. It's yeah. not like you, not like you didn't have a tragedy. <laughs> right. Yeah. So well, you know, it, it's uh, the union and and the company are back in effects bargaining. Uh, we, Brett, uh, the president, myself, and Gerald Miller. Uh, went out to Yellow Pages yesterday so that folks could yell at us in person. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we t- tired of letting them yell at us over the phone, so we thought, hey, might as well do it in person for a couple hours. Yeah, you mean that they <laughs> yell at you because you're a union officer? Well, they yell because we don't know anything. Mm-hmm. And and you know, of course, uh, the bad thing is, uh, we just found out that yes, the only notification that the the D- District Six received was a phone call the morning of se- of November 27th. Uh, and it trickled down to me about an hour later, uh, and uh, the union actually received the letter from the company mm-hmm. on the 30th. You know, I've been on the executive board for my union since 1993, and the members never yell at me. That's because I'm not a steward. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm not Aren't a steward. I'm not a committeeman. Guy. I'm not a chairman. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just the editor. And they know that if I knew anything, I'd have already told them. Right, you'd already put it in the paper. <laughs> that's why. That's why nobody ever tells me anything because I'll put it in the newspaper. That's great. I love it. And now I'm chairman of the retirees, and the retirees are pretty nice. They don't, yep, they don't even yep. yell at me. But but union negotiations, like union organizing, is usually conducted in secret. Yeah. Uh, and that's very hard for members to get because they think, well, you know, why don't you just put a microphone in there so mm. we'll know everything that gets said. Oh, Lord. But the truth is, if you're negotiating something, uh, you have to have some privacy. And, uh, yeah. and all union negotiations are not exactly the same. No. But generally speaking, union negotiations, like union organizing drives, are done pretty much in secret. Right. Then when they've, when they've reached an agreement, then it gets painfully democratic because everybody says, well, let's go back to work. You know, we got it done. Uh, and, and that's not the way it has to be done. No. It has, they have to write up what they've agreed to. They have to get that out to the membership. They have to go through a voting process. That's right. Just like uh, the organizing drive out now for the gate agents out mm-hmm. at American Airlines is going to take until January 15th. So people might be voting. saying, right. well, why can't we get the results? Why can't we get the results? Well, it takes a long time. Yeah. Democracy 
it takes a long time. You know, and, and J.D. Williams, who was the, the president of CWA Local 6215 for many years, uh, I, I was, back in my younger days, I was very frustrated with the union because we were in contract negotiations. I couldn't get any information. What I did get was vague and, and unclear. And I just got mad. And I went to J.D. and I said, this is just ridiculous. When I had, in a meeting, stand up, this is ridiculous. We don't get any information. JD said, okay, here's the deal. Here's how I want y'all to think about it. You got to think about negotiating a union contract like playing poker. You have to hold your cards close to the vest mm -hmm. and you don't share anything because as soon as you put out that you've agreed to something, the company could come back tomorrow and pull it off the table. Sure they could. So yeah. it's much better just, I know it's frustrating, I know it is, but you have to be patient and have faith in your bargaining committee and support them with mobilization activities uh, within, your, within your work groups. Yeah, you really don't have any choice because there's only two sides. <laughs> <laughs> this is something this is something that every child should learn. Every child should be put in a union for a little while until they learn this. Oh, that's a because good idea. There's only two sides. Uh, in in negotiating, it's only the company and the union. Mm -hmm. One is going to make money, uh, one is going to get a bunch of benefits we uh, hope. At, at the other's expense. Yep. And the truth is it uh, the workers' wages from the boss's point of view, the workers' wages comes out of his profits. And so he doesn't—he don't want to turn loose of any of that because that's his profits, and he thinks he's entitled to it. I mean, he sat there back. There goes that word again, that all, entitled thing. He sat back. <laughs> he sat back and watched y'all work. Yeah. So he should have. He thinks he thinks he should get all of it. We've and, talked uh, about you and know, workers we, want a piece of that. Well, so sure. and they realize it's going to come out of his profits. So there's only two sides. That's it. And that same lesson applies right now in the struggle over the uh, over the. Fid, uh, fiscal negotiations going on in the United States right now. There's basically there's only two sides. That's it. The rich people don't want to take <laughs> any. They don't want to pay taxes, mm -mm. and the poor people <laughs> don't want to suffer any more than they're already suffering. And, and, and uh, really can't afford to suffer yeah. anymore. I mean, this is awful. Right. We got to almost two million people, thanks to Governor Perry saying no to the the federal money. To, to increase our insured people here in Texas, almost two million people are going to go without health insurance mm -hmm. again. They're going without it now. Yes. And they will but go they, without it further. Further. Because of uh, Governor Perry's politics. Oh, and did you hear, did you hear what uh, uh, Strauss said? No. You know, the Speaker of the House? Oh, well, he said that he agrees that $2 billion should be put back into education. Mm -hmm. But you cut it by five point four billion. Oh, so they so they. So you're going to give us back two? two. Back. Ooh, come on, man. Well, education <laughs> is going to be hurting in oh. Texas. The legislature will be meeting. I think it starts January the eighth. January 8th. the eighth. That's right. And uh, everybody should be getting ready for that. I know the Alliance for Retired Americans is going to hold our convention on January the fifth in order to get ready for Good the for legislative you. session. And you can expect to hear quite a bit from retirees in the coming legislative session. Good. We're probably going to get cut and beat up some more, but we are not going to take it laying down. No, sir. 972-647-1893. If you're thinking about calling getting your opinion in on all this, it doesn't have to be just me and Bonnie. We, we seem to agree quite a bit, Bonnie. Well, you know, <laughs> I think that that has a lot to do with uh, our backgrounds uh, of, of being uh, poor and uh, labor activists. I think the thing about working people is that they don't know they're working people. And right. uh, if if everybody, like Bonnie and me, realize that we are working people and we know which side we're on, uh, we, we tend to be kind of outspoken. Yes, but, uh, everybody needs to be. But that's the whole point of this message is that for most of us, I believe something like 98% of American people work for wages. They work for a paycheck. Now, some people, it's true, maybe they may have a million dollars on their paycheck, but uh, they're still working they're for still wages. Working. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, somebody else is paying or signing their checks and, uh, and really should stick together and should be able to work together. Uh, I noticed that the CWA took out a full-page ad on the behalf of the Verizon workers. Yep. At, uh, that cost them some money. 
but it's the the point is that people should realize that Verizon settled on the East Coast, but they did not settle on the West Coast, and they have not settled in, in Texas. Texas. That's so right. sooner or later, they're going to be asking for people to stand with them, uh, stand for wages, stand for benefits, and stand for working people. And uh, and when they do, I hope you'll be there. I know I will be. Absolutely. You know, one good guy is in Congress. We were talking about Congress a while ago as if they were all bad, but uh, there's one There's one. <laughs> there's really, a couple are okay. Have you ever seen Bernie Sanders? I the, love Bernie Sanders. He has a thing on uh, He has a thing on YouTube that explains the fiscal crisis uh, situation very, very well. Yes, he does. A completely manufactured crisis. Yep. And, uh, and one that is being used in order to uh, advocate for cutting poor mm-hmm. people. Bernie now, is brilliant. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. Well, Bernie Sanders has a bill to stop the concentration of media ownership. In mm-hmm. other words, mm-hmm. a few corporations own just about all the radio stations, and they want to they want to own them all. Radio stations, billboards, television stations, it's uh, just, newspapers. Just about all the information that we get: books, movies, mm-hmm. television. Just about all the information we get comes from just a few corporations. They've got a stranglehold on it. That's right. And Bernie Sanders is standing up against that. I want to say something good about Sheila Jackson Lee from Yay! Houston, too. Uh, she, she's, uh, she called for the, uh, the grand old party to stop its war on working Americans. Good for her. Which I thought was pretty, 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 pretty plainly. Yep. Uh, there's a war against working Americans, and a lot of the people that are doing it are Republicans. Some of them are Democrats. We had a guy call last week and pointed out that, you know, not all Republicans are horrible and not all Democrats are saints. And that's no, true. No, that's, that's true. Well, we I don't, mean, that's... We don't look at that. What we look at is who's, <laughs> who's the working people and what's the working people's side on everything. Uh, so we can bring on a caller. Oh, the... The meeting in Grand Prairie on Wednesday. Oh, somebody Wednesday. wants the location yeah. for the meeting in Grand Prairie on Wednesday. I need to give that out anyway. Yeah. Uh, on Grand Prairie on Wednesday, we'll be at UAW 848 Union Hall. It's my Union Hall. I may as well confess. Yes, it is. It's uh, at 2218 East Main Street in Grand Prairie. Uh, Main Street, if you're coming from Arlington, is Division, I think. And if you're coming from Dallas, it's Davis. Uh, and then in Grand Prairie, they changed the name of it to Main Street. It's, and, uh, it's Highway 180. Right. And a really easy way to get there from Dallas, if you go west on Interstate 30 to MacArthur, mm-hmm. go south on MacArthur, which dead ends into Main Street. Yeah. And then you'll go west on Main Street. and You and can do the same thing if you're coming from Fort Worth. Sure. You can get off on Beltline and go south there you a couple go. of miles till you get to Main Street. And then uh, it's between Beltline and, and mm-hmm. MacArthur on Main Street. In Grand Prairie, but uh, the address is 2218 East Main. Look for the big American flag. That'll be indoors. We don't care if it rains or not. Right. Uh, Indoors at 7 o'clock. And that's going to be a teach-in on the conspiracy to make America a low-wage country. Because that's what we talked about last week. Yes, sir. Uh, There is a conspiracy to make America a low-wage country. And we need to be looking at that. We need to also look at the solution, which is organizing. And that's why it's so important that the Walmart people are going to be there to show us the way. It's like the children shall guide you. The, the, the world Walmart workers are going to show the rest of us what to do. 972-647-1893 is our number. We're running very, very low on time. Uh, we, we like to point out everything that happens to help working people, and we That's right. appreciate so much that KNON lets us get on here and rant and rave about it for a little while, once a week, and we appreciate even more than that, as you listened. We'll be back next week. Thank you. You're listening to KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas, the voice of the people, voted best radio station for music two years in a row by the Dallas Observer. Did you know that KNON podcasts all of its local talk shows? KNON has local talk each show covering your community in its own unique way. So if you missed one of our great morning talk shows, you can go back and listen to it online. We keep the shows for two months so you can hear everything you have been missing out on. Visit KNON.org for more information about the KNON Morning Talk Shows podcast. Also available on iTunes.